my friends. Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Eve. And uh, today is the big question and answer Q&A episode. We're going to go through a bunch of questions as quickly as we can. And also on this video, it's special because it's the big giveaway. I'm going to be picking a comment below and um, we're giving away a booth, a compressor, my swallowtail airbrush, uh, a bunch of paint. I'll throw a kit in there. It's like uh, Santa knew and read everything on your list and brought it to you. And uh, unfortunately, this is for America only, the USA. Um, I priced some of this stuff for shipping and it is just astronomical and it's just way out there. So, and the booth is big. So, uh, sorry for all of my uh, overseas international fans. I am sorry for that. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have to go with uh, USA only on ground shipping because it's such a big package. Um, for that, I'll go through the, if you stay tuned to the end, I'll uh, try and take pictures, a video of what I'm going to be giving away and um, what you got to do for that. And uh, so please, if you're just starting this video, subscribe, like the video, and, um, and you're halfway there. You got to leave a comment too if you want to win. Now, I'll go through the details again. Um, if you have a booth and you, and you have a compress and all that, and you want to still comment, you can comment, but let me know somebody else can have it. You know. If this is to get somebody going in the hobby. This is what this giveaway is all about. Um, all right. So before we proceed, I want to mention a couple of things. All right. Speaking of my airbrush, restocks are coming. I wrote it down. December 30th, 240 are coming back in stock. December 30th. That's what, the end of the week coming up. So uh, there's a restock coming at the end of this week. And then in two weeks, January 15th, Another 340 will be back in stock. Super high demand for these. Wonderful feedback. And I love you guys for it. And uh, I did want to put out a product that, uh, that performed. And um, I believe we did. And the feedback you guys are sending me is awesome. But anyway, that's the restocks. 240 at the end of this week. And in another couple weeks, January 15th, 340 more. We'll be getting the warehouse. So we will put that aside with that little note. Um... Also, I'll mention this in the in the questions. Uh, their advanced, their uh, starter airbrush, which is phenomenal. I still use this once a week. Uh, right now, it's twenty nine ninety nine. Cannot beat this airbrush for that price. Twenty nine ninety nine. Two needles in it, a three and a five, three and a half. Yep, point three, point five, and a five. And it just airbrushes beautifully. It's got the new nozzle. It's awesome. Twenty nine bucks at fifty. I recommend this airbrush at twenty nine. I wrote it down. It's on sale right now. Go grab them. I'll put a link below in the description. I'll bring this up again in the question and answer. All right, I got some show and tell here. I'm gonna hold stuff up, but I'm gonna try and get through these questions quickly. I was gonna have the questions printed across the bottom and all that, and um, um, my buddy who was gonna do that for me, because I'm not quite capable of it yet, um, got sick, he's got COVID and uh, I feel bad for him because his Christmas is kind of ruined, let alone editing my video. So I'm just going to read these off, go through a quick show and tell, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay? Q&A begins now. Let's begin. If you could go back in time and teach yourself one thing in regards to modeling, what will it be? Uh, patience. Uh, when you're younger and you're starting off with this and you, you want quick results and you want good results like that, and uh, it, it doesn't work in this hobby. Um, I think the hobby in and of itself teaches patience and uh, particularly with airbrushing I think I got another question about that you just got to take it slow and then you break down what you're doing wrong get it right and as you go on of course with everything sports anything you just get better at it guitar playing drumming you know speaking of music which I love um, so it's just patience just take your time you want to get it done and ready to get it done right away even people see snap kits, because I grew up gluing my models my whole life. And all these new Gundam kits are all snap. And I had to glue, and you had to wait for the glue to dry. They didn't have the quick gluing back when I started. You had to wait. So uh, I was forced to it, patience. Today it must be a little harder, but patience is the one. Um, what would you consider the most versatile painting, car paint of, oh, paint for painting 124th, 125th scale auto car kits? Uh, 
And you could buy a specific paint for cars, which is, I say, Splash is local here in America, Splash. But you're buying this color, it's just for the one car, unless you're going to paint all your cars this one color. This is the problem uh, at this price point. Uh, these are eight bucks a jar, and, uh, and then you got to clear coat them, so it's a two-step process. Uh, if you have a beloved car kit you have, grab one of these, get the exact color you want. But to go and build a bunch of kits, uh, I would say probably Mr. Color, whose name is going to come up quite a bit here. Mr. Color is probably the best way to go. At three bucks a jar tops, uh, they have every color. Look off to the side, that's where I keep my. Uh, they have every color in the rainbow. They have a metal lineup like all clads, like all the metal colors. They have candy colors, the silvers, the brasses. Um, they have clear coats. Uh, Mr. Color is probably the, the way I would the way I would go. Uh, it's most versatile. It brushes on nice, and uh, it sprays on nice too. And also, I would recommend my paint, my Mecca Empire paint. Even though it says Mecca, it's actually car colors. I get these from a car color company. Um, they make car model paints, and I asked them to make colors for me and put my name on it, and he did. And these are enamels. These brush on beautifully. All They level off nice. All the strokes disappear. But they also airbrush great with some lacquer thinner. You thin them out. And uh, I have a ton of colors. You can see that's a pearl red car color. But, you know, I called it cherry cola. It's an enamel. Oh, not focusing on me. But, uh, yeah, a little, little shameless plug there. Mine uh, actually are car colors uh, relabeled. Uh, what's your favorite go-to gloss black for metallics? I'm talking what you mean, the black base when I put metallics on it? That's an easy one. I was using all clad gloss black base. I was airbrushing it a lot, but when I had to do a lot, you guys see me on a lot of these tests, it takes a lot of time to lay that down. So uh, I discovered Tamiya TS14 black, gloss black. That's what I use on a lot of these. When you see a bunch of black spoons, it's either this or my 2K because I had time to lay down the 2K black. But this one's still sealed because I bought a case of it. It's still sealed. And they're up there on my shelf. And I, I can see I got four of them up there already. <laughs> four cans. That's how much I use this stuff. It, it dries glossy like a mirror. And it takes all the paint I put on top of it. So Tamiya TS14 Gloss Black Spray Can is a great metallic base. Let's move on. In terms of Gumpla kits, what series is your sweet spot for color separation when painting kits? Uh, double O, anything from double zero, or the Seed series. Um, anything Seed or double O have that perfect, not over the top, not one big piece is red or, you know. Um, yeah, here's, a, here's an Astray. This is from Seed. All right. This is the M1, but uh, it's an Astray. It's an Astray. And here is the starting point for my Braun F1 racing uh, themed kit. And you can see you just take certain parts from that and just painted them the color to match the paint scheme I was going for. There's a little bit of red in the, the race car. There's a little piece on the roof that's red. So let the knees red. See it? And uh, this is a pearl silver. And uh, the striping on the car is this bright fluorescent greenish yellow I mixed. And there it is. That's the Braun racing car. I made my own decals. Bridgestone and Braun and the race car driver. And this is what, uh, this is that astray. And you can see color separation is beautiful on it without doing anything. I didn't even have to mask anything, I don't believe. I think I masked up here, the black in there. So that's my sweet spot. Seed kits or double all. They have a nice separation right out of the box. How do they get started testing paints and the equipment? Um, Without going back, how I got into the hobby, uh, testing it, uh, I sprayed something and I don't know what it was. We're going back four years when the channel started and uh, the paint didn't look like what it looked like in the jar or the cap. And I was mad because I had it all planned out. And uh, so I started spraying uh, plastics and spoons and I started laying it out and getting the proper shade of what I was looking for. And um, that gave me the idea to start spraying all of my paint first on a spoon or a piece of plastic, a, a plastic plates I was using uh, plastic plates but uh, what happened was um, I thought I, uh, others would want to know the same thing and so uh, that was the beginning of the channel the channel I tried unboxings and I tried different things I said everybody's doing this everybody's building this and doing this what's different 
I know people will test a few products here and there, but testing all the paint in the market, no one was doing. And this is something I wanted to know because I love colors. I love paint. Um, got it from my dad. And um, that's what started. I just started it. I said, somebody else wants to know this. If I want to know it, a bunch of people in the hobby want to know it. And uh, they want to save money, too. They don't want to buy like I did. I bought these colors. They didn't look like the cap when it got sprayed. So um, some look, caps look beautiful when you spray it. This ain't the color. And that's what happened. I started spraying it, and I was already trying to get the channel going, and that's what I did. I started putting down sample tests of paint. That's how it started. All right. What acrylic primer have you tested and recommend to use with an airbrush? Best acrylic primer is easily Stino Res. This is my favorite acrylic primer. I got a few others I got to test. Pro Acryl. There's some out there. Um, and I hear good things about many of them, but these Stino Reses, which are made by Badger, believe it or not, Stino Res, a horrible name, um, they're wonderful. Now, the package says don't have to be thin. You need a big needle if you're not going to thin them. I thin them slightly, and I'm talking like 10%, like 9 to 1, not like uh, lacquers where you're 50 50. Um, but these come in blue. There's a silver. This one's silver. It's gray. Here's white. There's a silver. I'm looking over there because I got them all over there. It's a gloss. It's a gloss black for uh, chrome base. So uh, Stano Res is, I, my opinion, is the best acrylic primer. Let me put these down in front of me as I lose desk space here. All right. If you'd recommend a beginner list of a full setup for airbrushing, Gumpla Kits, what would it be? All right. Well, beginner, we're going to figure. I, I don't like to recommend junk just because you're starting off. I almost quit airbrushing because I bought a Neo. I think a Neo by Iwat. I hated it. It didn't airbrush good. It was hard to clean. I, I couldn't stand it. And then I bought a good airbrush. I think my TSI Krios. And uh, that changed my life. So I don't believe in buying a cheap airbrush. So with that said, this is the best equipment for the money to get you going. All right? You need an air compressor. $67, the one I tested on Amazon. Wonderful. No tank. $87, 20 bucks more with a tank. Those are awesome prices, you know. That, that's as far as getting in and getting a good piece of equipment for the good money right there. Um, a spray booth, 100 bucks. The ones I tested recently um, and the one I did last year, the same kind of idea. They're all the same. Looks like they're all from the same company. But on Amazon, about 100 bucks, you can get a nice spray booth. The one I'm giving away, I think, cost me 100 bucks. And uh, it's a double fan. It's beautiful. So 100 bucks for that. 67 to get in on a good compressor. Don't buy a cheap plastic compressor. Uh, for an airbrush, I recommend I just started. This is a wonderful airbrush. It's got two sizes. You can lay down primers and put your regular paints down for detailing. Like I said, right now this is 29 bucks. Even at 49, I would say start with this airbrush because this is right up there. I mean, this blows away the Neo, which is 150 bucks right now at uh, Hobby Lobby. It's made by Iwata. People think it's an Iwata. It's not. It's an Iwata. They stamp their name on a Japanese, a, a Chinese. Uh, Airbrush, and not even a good one, because I believe mine are made. These are made in China, and these are wonderful machine pieces. So, um, this airbrush at twenty nine bucks right now, it's twenty nine. It goes up to forty, but I think it's on sale for the week. The booth is a hundred and sixty seven for the compressor. You're good to go. I'll put the links below for all these for you. What is the best and easiest chrome uh, paint to spray for best results? Chrome. Tested them all all these are my favorites all right sms hyperchrome fantastic comes in two shades uh cool and dark and warm i guess it's dark and the cool is the brighter all clad the old standard or a stand which is also all clad technically a new formula a new company but i believe uh they took over the company in europe and now distributing all over and uh, the story is yet to be told but these are kind of the same. And, um, oh, let's mess these up for you guys. And Green Stuff World. Love this stuff. It goes on great. This is alcohol based. Um, Green Stuff is an acrylic company. You'll see the flame logo, though. So this is uh, acrylic. Not, it's, they're not an acrylic. This is an alcohol base. But this is a great chrome. Cheap. What is this? Four bucks, I think, for this little thing. Not a lot in there, but it's a great chrome. Move on. All right. 
What's the best overall clear coat for chrome that won't dull the finish? At least not too bad where it ruins it all together. Uh, so far it's still aqua. It's still aqua gloss from uh, All Clad. This is their aqua gloss. It's cheap. It's 10 bucks. You get this giant bottle. It's basically floor polish, but uh, a little nicer. I tried floor polish. This seems to be a little better than floor polish. And like I said, it's really cheap and I'm shaking it, but it actually says don't shake on the bottle. It says don't shake it. If you do, you gotta walk away and let it settle. It actually has big red letters, don't shake it. But Aqua Gloss Clear from All Clad is good for Chrome. As good as it gets anyway. I'll be testing a couple other products coming down the road to see if we can get it to look better. All right, where are we here? Uh, what model did you have the most fun building and customizing? The Astray, the one I showed you, love that. That's based on the Braun race car. And uh, I just had a blast. I even made my own decals for that. Would you share the info on the shelf life of storing your paints? What different brands and colors? I'm sure you have some that are more than several years old. Any tips for keeping the paint fresh? Okay, this page is done. Let's get rid of that. Uh, yeah, I had some paints that went bad. And uh, for that, if they're, la if they're uh, lacquers, use uh, Mr. Hobby's uh, Mr. Replenisher. I got a bunch of bottles because... I had to replenish a few. And it's pretty random. I got stuff that bought the same day four years ago that looks brand new. So it all depends on the cap and the cover, you know. Yeah, see this one's kind of on the thick side. It's not pouring out at all. So I'd have to replenish this. But for stuff that goes in the storage for a long time, you want this. This, don't get any Tupperware. You need the Tupperware that has a seal, a, a rubber seal. And you can triple lock it or quadruple lock it. And these are my uh, these are some of my Gaia's I've had for a while. They're like brand new. Look at that; it holds them perfect. Here's the brand. I got these at the container store. I'm gonna hold it up for you. That's the brand. I mean, you can get them anywhere. Here's a bigger one. Now you want you need one like this. Rubber seal around the edge, right? Here's another brand, but it's a container store brand, so they make their own. You can get them on Amazon too, I guess, but it needs this rubber seal or else it is going to get in. But these are good for the bigger bottles, like my 2K. Holds right up to the lip. See it? And um, you're going to need this if you want to do, uh, I think, the craft paints. Even craft paints will store in here. See it? It's the bigger size. And you got the four corner locks. And that's airtight. As airtight as can be, but it will keep the paint a long time. And um, my tip of always cleaning the top of the jar and the lid. You take the lid off, you wipe it all the time with a uh, paper towel because any other paint dries on the on the uh, jar, when you go to screw it in, it leaves a gap when the paint dries and air gets in and that's how your paint gets ruined. That's why some of these stay a long time. They've been really sealed. I never use them, so I never open them. They have a perfect seal. But this is what you want. You want this beautiful full locking with the rubber seal for your paints. All different sizes. Get the one that fits the paint you want to you want to store. All right. If you had to get rid of all your paint, it can only keep one brand. What would it be? Uh, Mr. Color. Only because they have it all. They have it all. All the metals, the metallics. I'm looking at all the metal line up here. They have the pearls that go on black and they come out with a pearlish color. You got your candy colors, these uh, metal like colors, the GX line, the regular line that goes into military colors. Um, they're three bucks a jar, up to five bucks, depending on the size, which is still cheap today. Um, they brush good. You can get them almost anywhere. Any online retailer has these, uh, as a hobby shop goes. Their thinners are great. The Mr. Leveling thinner back here is my favorite thinner in the world. Um, so Mr. Color is the, is the brand if I had to pick one. What's your first kit? What was your first kit and what was the first kit you painted? I, I can't remember. You go, I'm going way back. I'm talking 80, 78, 80. I, I graduated in 83. So you go back. I was 15, 14. I was building kits with my dad. He got me into modeling. I could never remember back then, man. It was limited amount of kits back then. Um, I did collect this brand, Entex, when I got into kits. This brand is gone forever. Entex. They actually took other people's cars and they put them in their own packaging or planes or whatever else they made. This is still sealed, like 120th scale, 2002 BMW. 
I think I found this on eBay. Just bringing back some memories here. But uh, I couldn't remember the kit and what I first painted. That's a tough one. But uh, what else he asked? What was my first Gundam show? See, I, I don't like to watch things dubbed. I mean, I need to watch stuff dubbed. I got used to dubbing. And um, I saw some here and there. It was tough to get them back when I was into Gundam. I was into the kits before I even saw a show. I saw the manga back in the 80s. That's how far back I go with Gundam. People didn't know what the hell they were when I was into them. But uh, the first show I saw all the way through dubbed uh, was Double Zero and then uh, Iron Blooded Orphans. And then I got the resources to get them all and see them all, you know. But I do love Double O. It has a place in my heart because it was the first one I saw. And uh, I really do love it. I love the intro, particularly the opening song from the first half of season one. It, it, it gets me every time. Uh, I like the characters, all of the pilots of the suits. I love Double Zero. I still struggle with clear coats. What is your favorite go-to clear coat? that is somewhat user friendly. I don't have that much trouble with clear coats. Currently, if you don't mind, I would go with my 2K. I don't know where it is, here's my satin 2K. My 2K clear coats lay down perfect, perfect. You, just, you mix them, you spray them, and it just looks like you dipped it in the gloss and took it out, it, it just goes on good. A lot of people don't wanna work in it, it's got a strong smell, you need a respirator. My respirator is over here somewhere. You need a respirator when you spray them. Uh, it's not too bad, because we're spraying small cars and stuff, we're not doing giant pieces but uh, user friendly besides the 2k I'd say mr. clear back to mr. again love these spray can mr. colors so these are mr. super clear matte and there's super clear gloss and you can also get their uh, their clears in a jar uh, these go down great every time they dry fast uh, even the spray can I would use on a product that I'm um, gonna be displaying just, the spray cans are really good I'm starting to get an airbrush. I'm having a hard time to get what to uh, what I need to get started. Oh, see the other answer. You just saw that, but they get started on airbrushing. So, see my other answer. All right, where are we? What do you take for inspiration to decide what color and paint schemes you're going to paint the model? Uh, cars, any color. You know, certain cars you grew up and you saw it the first time sticks in your head, like a yellow Z or something. Um, my bike's yellow. I had a, I had a yellow Honda CRX. I had all the great GDM cars, by the way. I had the A86. I had them all. Well, I was I was in that peak era of Japanese cars. The MR2 came out. I had them all. I had to buy a new car every year. That's why I was broke growing up. Um, but anyway, inspirations. Race cars. So this is a race. This is a, this guy was race race car, and uh, I just saw the car. I loved it. Also the 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 new Mercedes. It's a charcoal gray, and it's got uh, it's got Petronas was a sponsor. Petronas green. It's like a bright, bright green, uh, not like this kind of fluorescent, but a different tone of green. I'm working on that too. Uh, Petronas, uh, the red and white Marlboro cars. So I love the racing uh, liveries, but also I will see something like this. This is a big razor, and check that out. The way it looks, I just instantly thought of of. Uh, is it orange here? Yep. Orange at the front. See, and I just thought of it. Like Now I can do the whole kit, black and white, and then highlights of the orange, because you see orange is only here and here, but it really changes the look. So I keep this on my desk in front of me. You guys can't see it on camera, because uh, I am going to build uh, a Gundam with these colors. You know, it's not that special, but the black and white and the sparingly of the orange is what really makes it. So things like this. You see stuff like this? It sticks in my head. I take a picture of it, and then I'll take pictures. On my my phone is loaded with weird pictures of this color of things, and I said these are combos I want to use. Be it anything, a pair of pliers or a car, you know, something I see, a phone booth. And I, I'd say those are great color combos. I take a picture and I keep it in a, in a file, and I'll go through them when I'm about to do another kit for customizing. All right, where are we? All right, race car. How did I get? How did you get started with your own brand of paint? What was your motivation? My motivation was the loss of Model Master from Tester. These are all Model Masters up here. I think I got some on the table. Here they are. Yeah, Model Master. The enamels are gone. These are, these are very versatile. It's why I did my. It's why mine is an enamel. I matched them. The jar's almost the same, actually. Look at that. And uh, yeah, it was the loss of Model Master. So that's why I did an enamel. You can still use lacquer thinner to airbrush it, or you can just dip her in 
and brush it on. It brushes on great too. They have, a, they have tons of colors. You know, here's a pearl red and the orange. Um, really sad day when Rust-Oleum bought testers and just dropped this lineup. And they had like 400 colors. Every FS, federal standard color for aircraft they had. You want to build an aircraft, you open the instructions, you need these numbers. They had every one in the jar all gone because uh, Rust-Oleum dropped the line. That was my inspiration. That's why I chose an, an enamel to kind of replace what was missing in the market because otherwise everything else is out there if you think about it. I'm new to Gumpler Building. I'm looking for what would be the best paints to start with. Uh, but, uh, again, Mr. Color, we'll go back to Mr. Particularly with Gumpler because Gumpler uh, Bandai has a, a, a partnership with Mr. Color. So in their instructions, you will see the actual number. See, this is number 34 blue. It'll say 34 blue if you need it. If you want to build the kit exactly as they say, it say in the instructions, just pull out the old pad, write down the numbers, and you got them in a three, three bucks a piece or so, you're doing good. And you do a few kits, all of a sudden you get a nice collection going. So Mr. Color is the way to start when you're getting into Gumpla. Particularly, you just open the instructions. There it is, right at the bottom at the beginning, all the colors you need to paint. Our Mr. Color listed. All right. Favorite primer for jump wind metallics? No preference on primers. I seem to like all of them. Uh, I just started using this uh, E7. E7, right? It's an off brand, it's kind of a copy of uh, Gaia. Fantastic. Great. It laid down beautiful. Um, this AK, I don't use AK much. I like their real colors. Primer and filler, awesome. It's, it's a big jar, it's a low price. Comes black, white, gray. Here's the gray. I have two jars because I use it all the time. Love it. Um, hold on. Mister. In the jar, right? Mister Surfacer. This is black, my favorite. Here's their spray can. Here's their other spray can. All, all great. I love all those primers I just showed you are all fantastic. So no real preference as far as primers go, believe it or not. Uh, in your opinion, what type of plastic kit would you recommend as being a good example to start learning the art of airbrushing, i.e. a vehicle, a figure, aircraft, uh, aircraft. Because um, you, you you're gonna learn the spray and you figure it's maybe, if you're not camouflage, it's one color, you pick the gray. So here's, how, here's what I recommend, aircraft, all right? Eurofighter, this is 144 scale, it's tiny, but get you started. This is a smaller 172nd scale helicopter. It's all yellow. So you spray all the one color. You see what I'm saying? One of my favorite aircraft ever, the F-16, 172nd scale. Here's a couple of them. Yeah, I'll show you the size of it. See, so yeah, it's relatively small. See, so yeah. but it's all gray. It's going to be the one color. And you can actually glue these mostly all together and then airbrush the whole thing as it's together. So you can cover up all your seams and everything. Um, Here's a 172nd Tomcat. Love the Tomcat. Love the Hornet. So you get relatively low price. Very easy to start with because you're looking at one, maybe two colors. Uh, aircraft, particularly modern aircraft, is the way to go to get started to learn how to airbrush. Uh, what do you do for your day job? How can you afford all these paints and supplies? <laughs> that sheet is down. Uh, we do uh, shipped. I shop for shift. Um, I've been a gig driver my entire life. I've been a delivery driver since I was 16, 17. My parents, speaking of my parents, my dad, he spray painted cost, uh, custom jewelry and uh, little pieces and whatever, you know, just tons of little pieces and stuff in, in, in mass quantities. And um, they needed it, once it was done, they needed it delivered. They used to go themselves, but when I became of age, I wanted to drive. I told you all the cars I've owned. and. Uh, um, it was me. I said, I'll deliver it. And that was my job. I would deliver it, come back, wait, work around the shop, and deliver again. And then as soon as I got to, out, of, out of school, I started driving uh, any delivery job I could get. And um, 80, about 90, 91, 92, I got a job delivering uh, film for Kodak. You actually, uh, remember Kodak film? And you took the little uh, cartridge and you brought it to the 24-hour place. You dropped it off. Walmart, they all had it, CVS, wherever you live, and uh, it says, have your photos ready in 24 hours, and uh, I was the guy picking it up, bringing it to the lab, and then the next day, waking up, getting the stuff back again, it was a cycle, pick it up, bring up the, deliver the ones that were developed, take the ones that need to be developed, and 
bring it back. Drove all day, talk radio, heavy metal on the radio. That was my life. Still doing it today. I did gig work using my own car, what I just told you, with the photos. I blew through cars like you wouldn't believe. Thousands and thousands of miles. I'm talking 70,000 miles a year minimum. I was killing cars. Uh, I think I'm still paying for cars now that I blew up about 20 years ago. So that's what I do now. I do it for ship, and I like it because I can be home by early afternoon, um, and I don't have to go far from the house. Uh, the phone tells me there's an order. I like if it's I like the order. You take it. If you don't, you just wait for a better order, and uh, and that's it. And that way I can come come home. Uh, uh, my wife Judy is uh, homebound. So if there's, if there's anything going on, she needs anything, at least I'm, I'm in the area, you know, and uh, I'm not out like I used to be driving at Cape Cod. I live here in Central Rhode Island. I was delivering the Cape Cod every day. That's, that's where my miles built up on my car. And then I finally got out of Cape Cod. They sent me to Plymouth, Mass., which was the same distance, just the other way. So now I, I deliver five miles from the house. I love it. I'm in a big circle, and uh, I love it. It bring, brings in just enough money that I need uh, to live. And... Uh, and I'm doing good. So that's what I do. I try for ship currently right now. How can I afford the paints? A lot of this was bought on some money I saved up. I got started. Some of it is sent to me. Uh, Robot Kai, she sends me a lot. Um, a lot of them are sent to me. A lot of old collections. And uh, <clears throat> I will call somebody and see if they want me to test something and they'll send them paints. They'll send me say 30 and there's 50 in the line. I'll buy the other 20. That's why you guys will see the whole lineup. And uh, the money also comes from the channel. I don't make much in these revenues. I don't have a high, high subscriber count. But that's why I say if we get to the 100,000 mark, um, you kind of ride revenue changes and for the better. And that's why I think I can go more full-time. But I take all the money from the channel. It just gets deposited. And it's not a lot, but I put it back into the channel. That's why you always see somebody com something coming in. I'm not rich. I'm just buying for the channel. My day job pays for my bills, and this channel pays for itself. All right, what air compressor will you recommend to use with my Swallowtail fan cap? Uh, the one I showed you on Amazon with the tank or my Tootie, which is right there. Uh, the Tootie is made by uh, Spray Gunner. Uh, it's their no-name brand, but the, the air compressor, I'm looking at it now, is called the Tootie. But uh, I also like the one I tested on Amazon for $87. It's it, it, wonderful. You see, the other room, I test it when I do the, I point out here, because that's where the waterfall spray booth is. It's out there. I keep a compressor out there, so I just run out there. So either of those will work. But you need one with a tank. You need one with a tank. Particularly with the bigger the needle, you want to keep a steady stream of, of air coming through. The tank holds, it preloads the air. So you're spraying it, and it's while you hear it turning on, it's not going to your needle. Right? It's just filling the tank, anticipating you're going to need that air soon. So it's never, uh, it never pulsates. How's my wife doing? <laughs> What's the best way to come up with a theme? Well, best way to come up with a theme, I showed you the razor. So that's the same answer there in the cars. Uh, uh, Judy's doing well. She had COVID a few weeks ago, uh, really knocked her out. And I think she got it at her rehab center <laughs> where she was going to get better. She was actually starting to walk. She's off the, the walker. She's wall walking now. You hold the wall, but you can use her, both her legs. And it's tough to build the muscle up. It's, it's a lot of rehab, a lot of rehab. But she was doing great till that COVID hit. And I put her back, and uh, she just went back last week for the first time in weeks to rehab because she couldn't go in with COVID. It's like a two-week protocol. They don't make you go back. We went back, and the whole place had masks on. We said, what's going on? Are you have masks on because of Judy? No, we had an outbreak. Now we know where it came from. All right. What got me into Gundam? Well, I grew up with anime series, uh, Star Blazers, uh, Force 5. And I took a trip uh, uh, before I graduated, we went to Mystic Seaport, which is in Connecticut next to us. And they had this store that it's like a kite shop and model rockets, they had all that stuff. And they had a section of all these Japanese robots, and I loved them. And I collected that stuff because I, I remember watching Force 5 with Getter Robo and uh, Mazinga and Guy King. Oh, I loved that stuff growing up. I just glommed onto it. The Shogun Warriors loved it. So uh, when I saw the Gundam kits, and uh, I saw Gundam and I saw Macross. There was a lot of Macross kits back in the early 80s. And it was fascinating to me because there was no glue and they were pre-painted. And to me back then, it was shocking. It was shocking. We had to paint everything. And I like painting. But to see the kits pre-painted with no glue was really, really stunning to us. 
I say that because I, I, I'm talking about my high school buddy. We both built models together. And, uh, yeah, that's what, that's where I got that from. The Star Blazers and the Force 5, I just, the, the Shogun Warrior stuff, loved it. And then I started seeing imports of the little cast iron Shogun Warriors, and that's all I had to see. Still into it to this day. Uh, I'm not into it recently. I'm pushing 60, and uh, that's where it comes from. It never left me from my, my early teens. Of all the tar car types of models you build, what is your favorite? Uh, Gundam cars, planes. Oh, uh, cars. I love car models. Uh, love them. You can see I'm reaching back here. It's my favorite kit of all time. This Z kit. Uh, love car kits. Number one car. And then Gundam, number two. And I'm starting to get into... Well, you saw my stack here the other day. All the offshoot brands from Bandai. Those are awesome because they're so different. All right, let's move on. I'm a military modeler. I'm a focus on World War II, Korean, Vietnam. How does Vallejo, Ammo, AK, Taraya measure up against each other for realism? Um, and how do you get recognized representative spokesperson to get the freebies from manufacturers? Well, I'll answer that first. Uh, they'll write me. Uh, they'll see my channel and they'll write me. They'll ask me if I want to, uh, if I'm willing to test their products. It'll be a paint, airbrush, and uh, I, think that's how, I think that's how Gallery found me. And uh, I actually had the gallery first, and then they saw the video. And uh, yeah, but uh, some companies will contact me and ask me. And number two, I will write to a company, um, and I'll say I want to test your paint. Zurich was one. They sent me a handful. I liked them, and then I ordered the rest. <laughs> so <laughs> they sent me a, a little batch for free, which I appreciate. Know that I'm, I'm going to like them, and you guys are going to like them. So uh, then I ordered the rest. That, that test is coming up too. That's how I do that. And for uh, military. What he recommends? I like AK. AK Real Colors is really awesome. Unfortunately, I got a letter that they're going out of business. Not out of business. They're dropping the line. We'll be going over this soon. Uh, the AK Real Colors. But they're replacing it with something else, which could be better. You know, We're going to be doing a video on that soon. But I do like AK Real Colors. And then maybe I would go to Tamiya. Tamiya has a lot of military colors, too. Uh, I don't have many. I, I focus more on the bright colors. It, it makes for a better video. But if the paint is good, the paint is good. And they do have a ton of grays and all the military and the olive drab. So I'd say AK and AK's real colors. And they have a lot of colors for military and uh, Artemia. All right. What's the right way to clear over decals? I did it once. I lifted off and enameled. And a... I've never had a problem clearing over decals. Uh, use a good decal solution. Uh, Mark Fit here is great from Tamiya. You put this down, the decals sink in. Let the decals dry a week. I go a week. I'll do it on Monday. I'll paint it on Saturday. I'll clear comb. Let's all of it dry out. Uh, you got to let them dry a long time with that stuff and then clear coat them. You won't have a problem. I've clear coated everything, uh, be it a spray can or uh, a, or airbrushed, and I've never had a problem. I think your problem is you got to let them sit a long time. Uh, I don't know why you said you have an enamel. I don't have an enamel clear here at all, I don't think. So these are all lacquers. Maybe you should switch to a lacquer. Depends on depends on the decal, too. There's a lot of crappy decals out there, a lot of them. Best bench vice models? Uh, my favorite was a tester's one. It was on a ball joint. It was this big. It was made of plastic, but it stuck to the table. And you bent it anyway. I loved it. You can't get it anymore. I'm trying to find one on eBay, even used. Uh, I'm sick. It's gone. I love this thing. But uh, as a replacement, I have this little one from Hobby Mio, and I'll be testing another uh, vice. Um, I tested this uh, uh, on the channel, my tips and tools video. You can adjust it. It tips any way you want it. It's very heavy. It's like three pounds, this little thing. And then I got this recently, which I also showed. And this is awesome, and uh, not quite a vice, but it does hold pieces any way you want it. And these are oh, magnetic. You can put them anywhere so this is good to have too to hold up stuff particularly if you want to get uh, precision painting in there so I got that and that other vice right now but my favorite was that testers one I don't know where it went and it's gone but I'll I'm gonna look for it I'll find one someday on eBay all right where are we da -da -da. okay uh, do different compressors have different effects for finishes on the end paint result uh, no not really, unless it's a cheapie, unless it's uh, the plastic ones that I, you know, I don't recommend. Gallery actually has a little plastic one that ran great. Where is that? 
I think it's behind me. But so that one was different. For some reason, that one ran great. <clears throat> but mo most compressors, if you get particularly the ones I show on the channel, pick the one you want. It'll all be good. Uh, in the long run, if you want to do a lot of painting, get one with a tank. If not, you can still use. For years, I used one without a tank. The last couple years, and I switched over to tank ones. So, now, particularly the ones I talked about here, all good, all good. All right, what is the most important skill you developed as an airbrush painter? Getting the mix right, getting it just right. Now, you see me do it on camera, I do it by eye, I do it in five seconds, because you just get it down, once you, once you do it enough, you know. And um, getting used to cleaning it. I love cleaning the airbrush now. It's a zen-like experience for me. I just I can break it down and clean it in probably three minutes. Three minutes. And I've noticed my new airbrush, my Swallowtail, uh, just cleaning it out and back flushing it. I pull the needle out. It's it's clean. So that has a really good cleaning system built. It's just wonderful. Uh, speaking of my own airbrush. Um, but I still, at the end of the week, will pull the needle out and clean it out. But cleaning it, getting used to cleaning the airbrush and how it works, and uh, getting the mix of paint just right. Is there any way that a lacquer or enamel paint can be made that does not have the fumes, or at least as bad? Not really. They're going to smell as they smell. You're going to wear this respirator. Here's my Rhino respirator. And I use this because it lets me wear my glasses. I don't need glasses. I use these for uh, reading or painting. That's it. No interference. Changeable filters. Just use that. If you've got a good spray booth, You'll take the fumes right out anyway. That's all. That's what the booth is for. They capture the overspray and get the smell out of your house. So, no. Uh, unless you want to go to an acrylic lacquer. Now, the acrylic lacquer cuts the smell down. I believe that's one of the reasons why they started. You know, not as bad. This is an acrylic lacquer. This is Mr. Paint, MRP, uh, SMS, an acrylic lacquer. Tamiya, an acrylic lacquer. Aquios from Mr. Color, an acrylic lacquer. AK Real Colors, where's my AK? That's an acrylic lacquer. And those, they still smell, but the, you know, the smells, yeah. well, the Aquios smells the least. I'd say the Aquios, <laughs> just smelling them right now, the Aquios has the least amount of smell. There you go. All right. Hey, Rex, what would you say is the moment you really fell in love with painting kits? Uh, I see my dad spray. My dad was a spray painter, and uh, just watching him spray. And then my brother, who's a couple years older than me, he's the mechanic of the family. He's, my brother's a genius, and um, he would take parts in, make parts of a car he was working on or something. And my father would spray it for him because it was the same technique. It was a spray gun, you know. Even though he didn't do cars, my father was painting pieces. And seeing come done, then I, I would get a diecast car, all right, and I. Uh, you know, I'm going to get up right here, guys. The die-cast car. Love these parses, by the way. This is die-cast. And we would take that, and I would get a uh, furniture stripper or paint stripper and put it in a coffee can. We'd just take it all apart, you know, take the plastic off it, strip it, because it would have racing stickers on it, you know, and I didn't want that. I wanted it to look like that. And then I'd give it to my dad, and he'd paint it for me. And then he'd bake it. It would come out looking like that, you know, because it's the same, same thing. And that, that, that's what got me into it, watching my dad paint. Did you ever build kits that have been tested on? Oh, do you ever build the kits I test on? Nope. Those kits are just for testing. I break them down. I might strip the paint off and use them again. Uh, for those kits, I go to Hobby Lobby and uh, every other week, every other week they have a 40% off sale. And I'll buy kits um, that are basically half price. And I'll use those kits when you see me. Let's use a Gundam kit. Let's use a piece that I'll test on. That's, uh, that's where I get them from. I, I go to uh, Hobby Lobby and I get them on sale. I had a wholesaler's license. I was getting stuff wholesale too. So, uh, yeah, no, I don't build them. Those are just for testing. I might go ahead and build and, and build this one. This is the uh, Prism Blue Black. I might build that kit. <laughs> that one I like. All right. Do you ever consider throwing a model contest where we'd have to use only your paints and submit a certain number of pictures for our entry and I can judge them? Yes, I'm going to consider that. It's actually something written down on my to-do list. What type of paint do you have in the pipeline in the works? I have an acrylic line of paints in the work. I am working um, with Gallery and we're working on an acrylic line. Now, I don't like acrylics. I'm not an acrylic person. The closest I get to liking one is the new uh, 
well new, the uh, Vallejo Air, but I just tested the new formula and I uh, really like it, I really like it. And I told him, if I'm gonna put my name on, on acrylic paint, it's gotta be as, at least as good as that, if not better, and they promised me even better. And it's gonna lay down like lacquers, and we'll see. If I like it, I put my stamp of approval on it, I will have an acrylic paint line coming. Would you consider developing color shift to holographic colors for your mecha line? Yes. I'm working on stuff all the time. I want to make my own chrome, but it's so hard to get a company to do it because it's very expensive and not cost effective for the small amount that I would want. You know, I'm working in hundreds or thousands. These people are working in tens and twenty thousand and they ship. So that's why I can't get, like, it's hard to get this stuff developed for me because I, I, I can't order enough to get the price down. Is it possible to use acrylic and lacquer on the same model? I'm thinking of primer as a lacquer and acrylic on top of it. Yes, absolutely. Lacquer down and acrylic on top of it, no problem. Do you have a car paint lineup coming or thinking about it? Yes. I'm thinking of, uh, yep, I'll be working on some more colors. Believe it or not, my mecha line, we might change the name, it might go more car oriented. Uh, what's the rarest kit you've ever built and painted? That would be... Uh, Back here, I just showed you that Entex. But I collect rare kits. Uh, I had a massive collection. I lost it. The reason why you see my stash is because I'm, I guess, uh, I suffered a great loss when I lost my stash. Uh, in a, I won't go into details, but I built, I, I had a stash like this, a little smaller. It's going now. And I lost it all, so I'm kind of making up for it, as we say. But see, this is still sealed. Renault R5, one of my favorite cars growing up. I actually owned a Le Car. <laughs> A yellow one. That's my other yellow car. I had three yellow vehicles. Uh, yeah, here's a rare. Look at this, all faded. This they don't make. To me, it doesn't make this anymore. It's a convertible Z. Again, the Z. I love the Zs. But yeah, these are these are still unbuilt. No plastic on them, but inside is all brand new. Yeah. So yeah, uh, check this rare kit out. Porsche 914, 120th scale. From uh. Ready for the company who makes this? It's Bandai! Before they even made a Gundam. This is from the mid-70s, this model. How cool is this? So this is a real, this wasn't cheap. I think this was like a hundred bucks on eBay. Tinted windows, look at that. Brand new in the box. So yeah, I do love rare kits. Um, trying to replicate, I used to collect 112 scale cars. Big, BMWs and Lamborghinis, oh, they're all, you can't get them anymore. They're all worth a fortune. Three, four, five hundred dollars to get them on eBay. This is the LP400, not the 500 with the wing on the back and the fender flares. This came before that. Another rare kit. This one came open, but it's all intact inside. Old Tamiya, out of print completely. Ah, where are we? What would be your holy grail? Uh... Gundam kit. Hmm. And brand of model paint? Nah, I like all paint. I don't have a holy grail. There's some stuff I see overseas in Taiwan or Malaysia or in China. They, when you want AliExpress, I'm going to order a bunch of those paints because I want to try them. They're not holy grails, but I want to try everything, you know? Uh, <clears throat> kit? Probably the perfect grade, perfectability un uh, unicorn. Yeah, probably that. That's a nice kit. I mean, it's not hard to get. I can go on eBay now and drop 400 and I'll have it in the mail probably tomorrow. But that is a kit that sits in my mind. Gaia Notes versus Mr. Hobby versus Hobby Mio versus G Paint. Uh, Mr. followed by Gaia. I would say Mr. Paint. Only because it's a, we've gone over this a million times. It's just a perfect lineup of paint. And uh, followed by Gaia. Gaia is awesome too. They're getting there. They don't have quite the metal colors that they have, but they're getting there with this blue prism and. Uh, Looks like they're really starting to get there. I just got this in. This is their new premium line. I'll be testing this soon. I got more Gaia coming in this week than I think I'm caught up. Then I'm going to start testing them. All the guys are about to be tested soon. Um, but I do love Jumpwin. I do love this brand Jumpwin. I, I just love them. They're really, really a great company. These, these paints are wonderful. The jar is great. I like everything about Jumpwin. Some old timers that started 60 years or so ago. With lacquers such as Floquil, Seal Coil, I got some Floquil. What would you say is the greatest challenge and method of application of mass mass? Switching to modern acrylics like Mr. Hobby on the all new water and alcohol based paints. Ah, I, I'm not a fan of water based paint. I'm just. The smell doesn't bother me because I grew up with it. And then if you go with a respirator, 
it's lacquers all the way or enamels period end of story um so switching over uh, i find to me a really the easiest paint if you're going to stop painting and uh these are easy to get and they're cheap too like mr hobby but these are really easy to mix and and alcohol rubbing alcohol rubbing alcohol will uh thin them so the, and it lays down perfect it dries fast so these are really about the easiest paints to paint to me acrylics so that's that i'm not a, i don't like pure acrylics other than the, that vallejo air series what's the most important thing you have to do before starting to getting into airbrushing having the right equipment don't get a cheap airbrush. The cheapest I recommend is this one because it's not really a cheapie. It's a good airbrush. So other than that, don't buy a, a, a knockoff cheapy airbrush. Like I almost quit the hobby because I hated that Neo and a couple other. I finally bought a Japanese airbrush and changed everything. Um, one second. There we are. Can you paint clear paints on a clear spoon for windows and taillights for cars? Yes. You can paint clear over spoons. I, got, I actually have a clear paint test coming up over clear. That's coming up. You can clear smoke, clear black, makes nice tinted windows for cars. You approach different types of models, armor, gun blur, car, with different techniques. Are the techniques technically used for one type of model? For, all the same. The primer going down, the way you paint them, they all use the same type of plastic generally. You know, So, no, the same technique for everything. Once you get it down, you can build anything you want. What was the most difficult paint line to work with? Mr. Hobby, who I love, they're a Crisian pure water line. That, that's awful. I, for me, it's all, I can't use it. I found out recently, I'm talking a couple weeks ago, it's only made for brushing. I mean, they sell the thinner, and it says if you want to airbrush it, but I've read it's made only for brush painting. And now I believe it. Mission models, I didn't like mission <clears throat> because uh, it required a, a lot of mixing. You had, to, you had to put the poly into it. You had to let it sit. I wasn't crazy about Mission. Ravel Aqua Series. See the Acrisian. That did not go on good at all for me. The Aqua. And Italeri, the model company, they made their own line of paints. I bought a handful of them. Awful. Another bad paint. So Acrisian, Mission, Ravel Aqua, and Italeri. Have you ever built dioramas which you consider building? Yes. I would love to build a diorama. My favorite channel is Boy Lai Hobby. My wife loves Boy Lai Hobby's channel. And we watch him every Sunday, which is today. And, um, yeah, I would love to do a diorama. We're, I'm planning on something, I think, with water. Uh, I'm planning on something. Uh, your 2K stuff, does it hold up in weather? Yes, my 2K paints are auto-grade paints. These are all back in stock, by the way. Uh, the 2K gloss, satin, uh, the 2K black, the black, it's all back in stock. And my uh, polished alloy which I love, just came back in stock also. The camera's not focusing. Uh, yes, it's weather grade ready because it's actually auto grade paint. How important is humidity and temperature when airbrushing? Eh, in my house, I, I, I don't know. I'm in the basement here, but I have a, a control, a, a temperature control system. I keep uh, this handy so I can see what the humidity is. Hold on guys, it's attached so I'm trying to pull it, there we go. It's 92, not, oh, it must be raining outside. Well, 95 humidity outside, but 47 inside. There we go. So I keep that by, if you're in the 70s and 80s, I turn on my AC or my dehumidifier. Keep a dehumidifier in the basement. Keeps everything dry in the air. You won't have a lot of trouble. If it's spraying outside, whole different story. You really gotta track the humidity. It's gotta be below 60 if you wanna paint outside. Uh, you have any recommendation for magnifying or visor goggles? Uh, yes, right here. These are reader glasses. And uh, this is a one time, two time, and three time magnification. I put the numbers on it when I'm doing panel lining and stuff. I had to get it really close. I pull out the threes. Uh, I tried using visors. It really annoyed the hell out of me. It started leaving a line on my face. So I switched over to glasses. And then I got this container at the dollar store. Stuck numbers on it. One, two, and three. Right now, these are like a one and a half that I'm using to read the lettering here. So that's what I recommend. I'm gonna pause the camera, guys, for one second because I'm gonna get a drink. For talking so much, I gotta wet the whistle. All right, we're back. That didn't take long. 
All right, where are we? Uh, is your are your enamel paints beginner friendly? And do you have acrylics? Well, acrylics are coming out if I like them. Uh, yeah, you can, my my uh, enamels brush on beautifully and they spray beautifully. They're really easy to work with. They're wonderful. Can we expect more product collaborations? Yes. Yes. What's the best answer for preventing tip dry? Get a jar with hot water in it. All right. Keep hot hot water when you're going to start to uh, paint. And then, where's my? Here we go. And then, as you're spraying, if you're getting tip dry, you just pull the brush out. And I like to go in on it and just get it off just like that. And I'm actually, I was actually trying to develop. Um, one where I can hold up a brush and, and just tap it on near the booth, clean it off and continue brushing. I recommend taking the main cap off, the protective cap. So you just have the needle exposed. See that? So now you can airbrush and then if you got to get in there, you can actually use your fingers or like I do, you dip the, the brush in the hot water and just you, you go across the needle, takes it right off and you keep painting. That's how, uh, that's how I do it. And, of course, that is one of the reasons why I do not like uh, acrylics. <laughs> Another reason to uh, not like them. All right. What is the best way to paint chrome parts on a model car? Well, hey, uh, you got to clear off the chrome. Clear off the chrome. Take the chrome, cut it off if you want to do chrome parts. You've got to get it off the chrome. So you put the chrome, and I did a whole series on removing paint. I did chrome in that series, and uh, uh, oven cleaner came out number one. You just spray the oven cleaner in a Tupperware piece, and then put the, the chrome parts in it. About a half hour later, you, know, you take it out, rinse it off in the sink, down the bare plastic, all the chrome is off. Do not spray or paint on the chrome. You've got to remove the chrome. Is it possible to mix Tamiya lacquer, let's say they're Mika red, and Tamiya color clairs, to get an effect you want, which spray them, does the color, now yeah. does the color get more translucent? Yes, you can mix the two. You can mix any of them together. Um, to my lacquer with the micro, yeah, you can do it. No problem at all. Mixing reds and then putting colors in it, it's a great effect. A lot of people use that technique. My buddy does all the time. Have you tried painting candy colors over black chrome? Yes, I like it more than over chrome. It's a really deep uh, candy color. I, I do like that quite a bit. I got a bunch of candy tests coming up, but I will be doing it over black chrome. How far do you plan on expanding the growing product line? Oh, more paint. Hopefully, if I like this paint, and uh, I'm working on maybe another airbrush, the the top traditional style airbrush. I'm working on one of those, a collaboration to get uh, one of those released. The wall of kits behind you is that your backlog? Are they mostly already built? No, all those kits are my backlog. Uh, are the pistol grip triggers airbrushes, pistol airbrushes. Uh, as easy as a regular airbrush to control the amount of paint. Yes, I did the video on that recently. You just got to get used to it. It's easier pulling it or pushing down this way. Um, a lot of it's preference. I feel I've gotten more comfortable lately with the trigger style, but uh, it, it's it's preference. It, it, it's just preference. You get used to either one. How do you feel about uh, where are we here? Scissors or other items to cut out water decal. These are from Tamiya. Well, I guess you can get another brand, but these are these are actual decal uh, scissors. Love these things. They're really fine, and they do a great job of curving around and getting in the little spots. But you can find a scissor like this, you know, a good one. You know, we got to drop at least ten bucks. These are probably twenty because it says Tamiya on it. But uh, yeah, this is what I use. Uh, is Stano Res primer good to use with lacquer? Yes, you can use Stano Res with anything. I really like using my Mecha Empire Polished Alloy. Do you have any idea when it will be back in stock? <laughs> it's back in stock now. They got it in last week. I, I had it shipped to them. So they have it right now. What type of, not necessarily brand, is the best to put down before panel lining? Clear coat. Uh, gloss. You want to go with gloss? A gloss clear coat because you need the panel liner to run. And uh, if you have a flat, it's going to drag and spread. You need a, uh, It has to be a gloss. I was wondering about Mr. Clear Color and similar paints. Are they only good going over metallics to get a candy? I'm curious if you can use any other color. Yes, you can use, say, say you take Clear Red. You can, I got Clear Red right here. Yep, Clear Red, number 47. If you spray this over, a, you know, I'll say a spoon, something that's blue, it'll, the red over that, it'll be a purple. You'll turn it into a purple. 
So yeah, it doesn't have to go over metallics. You can spray it over any color you want. You get all kinds of effects. Uh, what's your favorite Gundam, non-Gundam series? Uh, Star Blazers, uh, up to date. I like uh, uh, Demon Slayer. I like Demon Slayer quite a bit. Jujutsu Kaisen is, is awesome. I like I like a lot of them. They got to be more of that supernatural or, or showing, you know, that kind of stuff. My wife loves all of it. My wife really loves all of it. Fruits Basket. She goes, her favorite's Iron Blooded Orphans, believe it or not. Uh, Evangelion. He says he loves Evangelion. Evangelion is really great, too. That's up there, too. How many paints do I have? I stopped counting at 1,500. I got more in the other room. I'll do, I'll do another count really soon. Uh, if I want... I've watched you thin acrylics to use with an airbrush. That's mostly what I do. Do you have you thin the heavy body ones that come in the tubes? I have a whole video on it, and it's a popular video. I did good with that video. Um, I mixed it with uh, windshield washer fluid, the kind you pour in your car. Watch that video, how to spray craft tube paint. Uh, it's a great video. Um, yeah, you can spray it. Thin it with. You got to thin it a lot, like 30% paint and 70% thinner. For thinner, I used uh, the windshield washer fluid. What makes a who makes a good polished aluminum paint? Uh, well, my polished alloy I do like. It's a little shinier though. It doesn't quite have the aluminum look, but uh, all clad and a stand. There you go, all clad or a stand. Both have a beautiful polished aluminum. All right, what do I do for a living? Oh, went through that. What's the most difficult build you did? It's a year ago today. I built an AMT fire truck for my brother to give to somebody who actually owned the fire truck or worked on it. It's an old one up in uh, the woods here where I live in Rhode Island, and uh, it was painted this off yellow. And he made the decals. My brother had the decals custom made. And uh, that, that AMT, not a great company. The kits are hit or miss, but boy, they, they required a lot of work. Really had to be a pro to build that one. What's my favorite car model that's ever been produced? Well, it's 300Z. Love this model. I'm building this one right now for a commission, and I'm going to be doing another one. Hasegawa's coming out with one, so I'm going to compare it to this. Love this model. Uh, if you had to paint big props, which metal paints are the best value? Non-glittery. Oh, man. A uh, SMS, probably. SMS, they make lead. Look at this. What do they have? Gunmetal, aluminum, stainless steel, steel, this is lead, uh, obsidian, bronze. Uh, yeah, SMS is great. Uh, the, the, the new A-Stand line, which I've just showed, is great. They got all the, the metals you're looking for. Um, yeah, that's about it for, for value. Yeah, this is about the biggest you're going to get, unless you're going for chrome. And you're going to have to go on Etsy and buy these chromes, these giant bottles of chrome. These are like... 28 bucks, but look at the size of the jar. Uh, is the spray booth good enough for safety? Should I also wear a respirator? No, wear a respirator too. Unless you're doing acrylics in an airbrush, in a booth, yeah, you probably don't need a respirator. If you're spraying all the stuff I'm showing that I love, grab one of these, 20 bucks. I don't think it's 20 bucks. This money would be 16 bucks. I'll put a link below for that. Do I like Witch for Mercury? I started it, got about six episodes in, didn't grab me. I will finish it. I finish everything. Um, I'm waiting to see something happen, but so I was told stuff happens, so I got to get through it. Uh, whereas Double O and Iron Blooded Orphans, uh, th those kind of pulled me in right away. What's the best way to get a chrome effect? Pigment or paint? Pigment looks awesome, but it's a pain, and you're not going to get around all the crevices perfect, you know. But you're better off with a paint. You're better off with a paint. Uh, what brand of paint would you suggest for airbrushing World War II American aircraft? Again, AK, Real Colors, or Tamiya? Uh, Model Master, if you can find them. Model Master made every color for military made. They made. If there was any color in the military world, they had it. That's why it was sad to see them go. But AK and Tamiya should get you covered. You've reviewed several spray boots. Would you recommend someone that currently sprays acrylic but plans on moving up yeah, all, all the boots I showed you are good for everything. I only spray lacquers. When you see me do a, 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 an acrylic on screen, that's the only time I use the acrylic. <laughs> I, I only use spray lacquers or enamels. So uh, all the boots I tested work for it. So no, it'll, it, you'll be fine. 
tell me what GSI Procon airbrush I use. Well, I got a bunch of them, but I use the PS289 the most. This is the point .3. Um, I'm going to try and model when I make an airbrush. This style, if we collaborate again, I want it to be this style. Just like this airbrush. I love this airbrush. Uh, it's the 289. Uh, have you ever heard of the TimberTech air compressor 879? That's the one I tested. Yes, it's great. Yes. Uh, what is the best airbrush for doing bigger flakes? I do mostly lowrider stuff. You're going to need a .5 or bigger, probably a .7. Uh, I recommend mine. One of the few on the market that comes with a .7. There's a Grex, but the Grex is well over 200 bucks. Mine's 100 So this comes with a .5 and a .7. So I would recommend the .7. Uh, this sprays beautifully. You've seen the, me, me test the, the primers. So the .7 should easily push some flakes out. But you, you can't go below a .5. But uh, I recommend my shameless plug. It's apparent that you do these videos. <coughs> See, my throat's going because you guys truly, you truly love the passion for the hobby. My question is, when you started putting your videos together, did you expect to have the following you currently have? No. Nah. It was really slow going. Then it took off with one of my uh, how-to videos. And then from there, it just took off. I was so happy when it took off because I really wanted it to work because I really wanted to show off all these colors. I just love these colors. And the reason why I'm doing it is so other people can see them. I show my wife, look at this color on a spoon, you know. With all the cheap Amazon airbrush kits, have you you've tested which one do you think is the best for the beginner? Uh, back to this baby. 29 bucks. The GAD, I say GAD cuz that's what it looks like to me. G H A D 39, 29 bucks. 49 off sale. I would still recommend it. Not cuz they make my airbrush, the company because this is a wonderful low-priced airbrush. I saw many boxes behind you. Have you lost interest in building? No, it's just time. I gotta work my day job. I come home and do this and uh, take care of the household. So uh, it's just time. I know I'm, I'm building up my stash because it's not going into the story. I just mentioned it. I lost all of them. I had a stash like this and lost it all. I built it up again. I was building back then. I didn't have a channel. But uh, now I do, so it's hard to, to do both. That would be three times. That's why it says when I can get the subscription count over 100, I, I think the, the revenue will be a little bit more where I can devote more time to the channel and stop building more. When I retire, I'm going to build a lot of this stuff. <coughs> I do uh, want to go bigger size needle, a one or a one and a half, to cover faster projects with clear coats and bases. Do I need a bigger compressor? Yes. Yes. You're going to need it. You're going to need a higher CFM, um, which is cubic feet per minute. The little ones don't do that because we don't need a lot of cubic feet per minute on an airbrush. You're going to need it. You have to go to Harbor Freight or somewhere and get a larger compressor with a high CFM count, usually a four or higher. So, yeah, you're going to need a bigger one. Any recommendations for good air compressors? That I showed you my air compressor. Uh, thoughts on Mike Portnoy returning to Dream Theater? I'm excited. I'm excited. So am I. Uh, he's actually having Christmas with the band tomorrow. And uh, I guess we'll see it on the social media. He's meeting up tomorrow. They already have studio time. They already had studio time planned because they were writing their new album, January, February, with uh, Mike Mangini, their old drummer. And um, Mike's stepping in, so we'll see if Mike we did a lot of writing. Uh, actually, this is my favorite album by them. This is uh, Metropolis 2, Scenes from a Memory. This is the cover of the CD. Um... You guys want your mind blown with fantastic music? Grab this CD. Uh, yeah, very excited. Very excited. As you can tell, I know all the details. I keep up with this. Love music, particularly metal. How to get rid of static electricity. It happens every time. Oh, you want to use this Tamiya brush, anti-static. I brush all my kits before. You know, I wish I had a kit to show you. You, you, you brush the kit off. This is anti-static. It removes all the dust and it keeps and it, it kind of gives it an anti-static uh, over the surface. Uh, awesome. That's what you want. And then um, tack cloths. My tack cloths at any hardware store. It's like a sticky material. You rub it down, it gets everything off it. Um, you want to spray the booth down with water maybe. You can get uh, doggy pads, doggy training pads. My friend uses them. He lays it down, sprays it with the water. It seems to keep the dust from flying around. Asking about when your Gaia Note shipment is coming. This week. 
The rest of them are coming in this week. The rest this week. And then we're going to stop. It's a lot of paint, so we're going to break it down, like the clairs and the, the metal colors. We'll break down uh, each, each time we test them. What's your favorite color that you've airbrushed at the moment? Uh, blue, black, prism. Love this thing. Look at that. Speaking of Gaia. Uh, what's your preference, Manhattan or New England clam chowder? <laughs> uh, even though I'm in New England, I prefer the red. My wife does also. She prefers the red. Or the clear. My wife likes the clear style too, um, which I guess is neutral, right? Um, my mom likes New England, to go figure. And my dad, my dad with both, but my dad liked New England or the clear. But I prefer the red. My wife also prefers the red. What is your biggest oops moment when airbrushing? Ah, oh, and do you like croissants? The food questions. I have a bag of croissants right now upstairs. I buy them every other week. Love croissants. Uh, oops moment. Uh, I was doing a project wild not, not too long ago, and I did put the cap. When you do a lot of paint, when you fill the when you fill the cap up all the way, the cup, you've got to put the cap on. See, when I, I don't need the cap when I, when I do tests for you guys. I don't need it because, uh, you know, a little bit, you're moving it, it's not going to come out because you only need a little bit to spray a spoon. But when you're doing a model, you want to fill it up, you've got to put the cap on the top. I went like this, and it just the paint went everywhere because I forgot I wasn't spraying a spoon. I was spraying a giant model. Ugh. Can you store putty in a jar like you would sprue goo? Right here. Yes. You can put, here's Mr. Putty. Mr. Dissolved Putty, and it's in a jar. That's it. So that's Dissolved Putty. Yeah, you absolutely can store putty in a jar. Uh, I scratch Bill McLaren IndyCar M16 out of Evergreen Plastic. Great company. Parts must be fitted then removed. Is there a glue adhesive that can be easily removed? Uh, uh, parts correctly finished and then glued again permanently. Yes, yeah, Zap or uh, I think Bob Smith. I have Zap. Yeah, Zap. Love this brand. Grew up with this. Um, they make a, a spray. This isn't it, but it comes in a container like this, and you can remove it. It's got it's a debonder, so you can build it, spray it, and it'll come apart. So you want to go with Zap. I, I'm guessing Bob Smith, which is that, has it also because they're kind of like competing products. Um, but yeah, you want to look at Zap or Bob Smith, and they have, believe it or not, uh, debonder. You spray it and you remove it. You're all set. Watch out there, buddy. All right, where are we? Uh, we're getting close. When you decide to make videos in the first place and why, I went over that. Um, I was trying to make a channel because I love YouTube. I pay for the premium so I don't have any ads. My wife and I watch uh, every night before we go to bed our channels that we love. And I just love YouTube, and I just wanted to be a part of the community. And I knew when I, that spoon idea, that's when it took off. So, yeah, I... Um, that's what I decided. I, I always wanted to be a part of the community. <clears throat> uh, dust on paint jobs and cures. Best acrylic paint. The new Vallejo Game Air formula, I love it. The, that that G Game Air or Model Air from Vallejo. That's my, that's my favorite acrylic paint right now. And dust on paint jobs. Uh, Anti-static when you go to paint. And when you're done, you're going to put them in a Tupperware. I put mine in the out there. Uh, the dehydrator and the dehydrator has a filter and no dust gets in there and it dries the paint within 20 minutes so it, it dries and there's nothing no more problem as far as dust goes that's what I do and anyway that was the last question that was it can I go back to more dream theater questions no more paint no I'm only kidding all right guys that is it now you want to uh, subscribe hit the subscribe hit the notification give me a thumbs up uh, leave me a comment if you want to win the prize and the prize will be uh, a spray booth, an air compressor, my spray gun, oh, hold on, my airbrush, a swallowtail, all will be there. Now, only look for my name. My name is Robert. I will say my name. The machines and the spammers, they're going to say you won. Call this number. I'm not making you call a number. I'm not making you pay for anything. I don't use WhatsApp. I just need you to send me an email. I'll verify your address. And they'll send out your product. That's it. Don't accept anything else. That's why I say my name is Robert. The machine doesn't know that. They're just sending out a fake spammer. Let me pause this. I'm going to show you the booth I'm giving away. And then uh, we'll wrap it up and say Merry Christmas. All right, guys. Here's the booth. And speaking of that last question, the, the uh, dehydrator, you put the model in there. 
you fire it up it dries the paint and as you can see back here I put a filter you can see all the dirt it's caught so far so nothing gets in it and that is how I end up with a dust free model this is the booth I'll be giving away this double fan with the LEDs built in there is the fan there's two fans behind there very powerful it's not the biggest but it's an awesome little booth and uh, we're going to be giving away the waterfall booth in a separate video because that's a much bigger box and that's going to be a, a giveaway in and of itself but for this one we're going to give away this booth a compressor that would be just like that one right there and uh yeah so that that's going to be part of the prize i'll meet you back in the room all right my friends there you go that's the giveaway and uh for paints i have a bunch of duplicates a bunch of gaia duplicates so it's gonna be a nice a variety of paint i'm gonna throw in there i'll throw in a model i'll find something over here to throw in there for you uh, a pair of nippers i might throw that in i might have a knife that'd be a nice, beautiful beautiful package so uh yeah i'll give it away by the end of the week so i get a lot of uh, uh comments going and um from that i'll pick uh, i'll do a random picker and we'll pick somebody as i said usa only sorry about you know, everybody else uh, it's just an extensive package for a giveaway. So there you go. That is it. Um, so coming up soon, I'm going to be testing the brand new Morpheus Mobius airbrushes from a, a gallery, a point two and a point three. They have a brand new nozzle design. We'll go over that in the video. Um, these come out Tuesday. So the video, this will be the next video. Very excited because I tried one of these quickly and they're impressive. <laughs> these spray really nice. So, uh, yeah, so this is part of their new premium line, and uh, that will probably be the next video. And then I got a spray booth that arrived today from Pace, who makes my big booth. They sent me the smaller version, so you guys don't have to worry about $700. We cut that price in half with this uh, booth. Excited to try it out. Uh, I love Mr. Pace. He's a wonderful guy. Anyway, that's the video. I want to say Merry Christmas to everybody as our journey to 100000 goes on. Uh, I'll wear another Dream Theater shirt in my next video. Uh, but, uh, yeah, th th I want to thank you guys so much. It's been an awesome year. You guys have been fantastic. And uh, you're a great community. You guys are just a wonderful community to deal with. And um, I truly do appreciate every single one of you, all your comments. Sometimes I don't answer you. Sometimes you might ask a question, and I'm driving, and I forget the question. And I wanted to answer it. I don't know what video it was under, and I can't find it. I didn't ignore you. That's just what happened. It just got lost. I, I'm just so busy doing everything at the same time. So please, if you don't hear me back, ask me another question again. I will get back to you. Email me. I always get the emails, and I'm able to start the emails and keep those. Um, but anyway, like I said, like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment if you want to win. If you don't need all the stuff I showed you, please let me know in the comment. Um, if you still want to comment that you don't need the, the, the package. And uh, anyway, Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. And uh, thank you for sticking through this long video. But I wanted to do a QA and a one. I wanted to do a little more fancier than I did. But uh, circumstances in COVID took that right out. But uh, anyway, guys, you have a great Christmas. We will see you next week. And we'll do something for New Year's too. We'll do something for New Year's too. Anyway, guys, you guys are awesome. God bless you all. Have a great day.